Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to have a look at another collaboration beer. So this one is half Danish on the home side and half German on the away side. The Danish brewery have featured on the channel a good number of times before. These guys are going through quite a big expansion phase just now with a new brewery, which is really quite exciting actually, and they were always a firm favourite of mine when it came to Danish beer. The German brewery, on the other hand, is one that I've never tried anything from before, but I have heard very good things about these guys particularly when it comes to the IPAs and the sours actually and I guess they are what you could term one of the kind of new wave German craft brewers actually there's some really exciting stuff going on in, the, cra in the, the craft beer scene and the general beer scene in Germany. Brewers are trying lots of different styles and things like this and it's really interesting just to see how uh, the German beer scene is progressing these days actually. So um, yeah, this one should be good actually and I hope you guys enjoy it. For the home brewery then, we are going to cross the Oresund and go to Svininge on Sealand in Denmark and that of course means that we're going to have a look at another beer from Toul or two beers as you would say in English. This particular beer is called the Wanderlust for the Wicked. It's a New England double IPA coming in at 8.5% ABV and it's brewed in collaboration with First Vyacic who are based in Berlin but brewing their beers as a gypsy brewery in uh, Bavaria. So yeah, this one should be really interesting. Um, I heard a lot about First Viatic, like I said, in terms of uh, IPAs and sour beers, I have seen their beers kind of dotting around a little bit. I've seen them in a number of collaborations, so fingers crossed I can uh, get a hold of some of their own beers and do some dedicated reviews to these guys at some point fairly soon. But it's always cool to have new German breweries here on the channel. I love my German beers, the traditional stuff and the new modern craft stuff is very, very interesting as well. And it's always nice to have some different beers from Toul as well. We're getting quite a bit of Toul over here in Sweden now, thanks to their big new shop any brewery they have in, uh, in Svening. Yeah, we're getting some of these beers through at least one or two every month actually which is always great. The last beer that I reviewed from Tool was the um, 45 Days Pilsner if I remember rightly which was quite an interesting one but um, yeah definitely excited to see what this beer has in store for us. I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it and it's nice to have another New England double IPA from Toil and as I say interesting to try my first one from First Viatchik as well so hopefully this is a good beer and let's see how we get on then. So as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Toil before and my future reviews that hopefully I can do from First Viatchik. Very first time I'm reviewing a beer involving these guys as I said. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want Want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the danish beers that i've reviewed for you and another list for all the german beers that are there that this beer will be found in both of those lists because it is dual nationality and those lists are being added to fairly regularly probably the danish one more so than the german at the moment and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Toul then, on to my brewery notes. So Toul, as I've told you many times before, was founded by Tobias Emil Jensen and Tori Ganter, who were students of Mikael Bjergso, the big boss of Mikeller. So originally they brewed with him in their school kitchens back in around 2000. 2005, and they continued to homebrew until about 2010 when they founded Toul, which in Danish means two beers. So when Mikael heard that his former students were still brewing, he insisted that they did a collaboration brew together. And this was what became the first Toil beer, the first commercial Toil beer. It was a double IPA. I'm not sure if you can still get that actually, but I would love to try that one if it is still around. Um, but they very quickly built a strong reputation for themselves. And with the help of Mikael, they managed to get their beers distributed across the world very, very early on. These guys, Toil, were one of the the kind of breakout Danish breweries, if you like, back in the day. Um, but as is the case with Mikeller, these guys were originally a gypsy brewery, so they didn't own their own equipment, and they used spare capacity at other large breweries. In Nurbro in Copenhagen, they've got the collaborative beer bar with Mikeller, which is called Mikeller and Friends, and this bar has an exclusive bottle shop with over 40 different tap beers. They also now have the Bruce Brew Pub in Copenhagen, which opened back in 2016, in partnership with Christian Gadian, and there's also now a second Bruce bar up in Oslo as well, and these two things are run kind of independently 
of each other and of the kind of wider uh, total operation. So these things are run more as kind of completely separate brew pubs, if you like, uh, which is pretty cool. So you will always get some very, very unique beers in there. Um, but they're co-owners. Uh, these guys total are co-owners in the various different Mikeller and Friends venues, which now includes the bar in Reykjavik and the bottle shop in Torvahallen in Copenhagen as well. And they also own the Cool Ship and Micropolis um, bars in Copenhagen as well, which I do need to go and check out at some point because I heard that Cool Ship is a kind of specialist sour beer bar actually, so that would be quite cool to check out. But as of uh, 2019, they've got a production facility at uh, Sveeninge on Sealand, which has around 150 square metres of floor space. They plan to have a clean side of the brewery, which has a large German Braucon kit and this side of the brewery is run by Tim and there's also a sour side of the brewery as well with fodders and a cool ship for producing all these different sour beers and this will be run by Nathan Borey and they've got a lot of space in there for barrel aging obviously as well. This whole facility from what I understand is a former fruit factory, a former kind of fruit packing factory actually which is pretty cool. Um, but they released the first beers from what they've called Total City in March of 2020 and as of uh, September 2020 these guys have produced in the region of 450 different kinds of beer acts. They are becoming a lot more prolific now that they are, well I suppose they were always prolific, maybe that's not fair. They've always been a very prolific brewery but they're even more prolific now um, that they have this brewery up and running in Sveeninge as well. So like I say, Toil are going through a very kind of big expansion phase at the moment and that means their beers are going to be distributed a lot more widely and things actually. So um, yeah, I do hope that we continue to get their beers fairly regularly over here in Sweden. And um, yeah, it's always nice because I, I went for quite a long time actually without reviewing anything from Toil and that was until I ordered from a uh, glass bank and I tried, you know, I tried, what was it, the Yule Milk and also the Dangerously Close to Stupid, I think it was called, the, the big West Coast, uh, big West Coast double triple IPA. But yeah, these guys, I really, really enjoy their beers. Dangerously Close to Stupid is lovely, Yule Milk is great and um, First Frontier is really nice. I need to try Final Frontier, but one of the best black IPAs you will ever have is the Black Malts and Body Salts from Toil. I think that's one of the best um, black IPAs that you're going to find out there on the market. So if you do come across that one I highly highly recommend that you have a go at it but um, yeah this is cool to see that they are kind of brewing all their stuff in Denmark now they brewed a lot of their beer down at the Profbrauerei in Lokriste Hefte near Ghent in Belgium for a very long time so cool to see that these guys have kind of returned home to Denmark if you like but yeah that's all I can really tell you about Toil for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on to the German side of things then, to First Viatchik. So as I mentioned to you already, First Viatchik are a gypsy brewery and they're based in Berlin and the company was founded back in 2015 by Lukas Viatchik and Georg First. So Georg has a background in digital media and operations. Well, Lucas worked with uh, web and graphic design, but he was also a very keen rally and racing driver. And one of the really random facts that I found when I was reading through the Hopf and Helden article on these guys was that apparently he won a camel due from taking part in a rally from Germany to Jordan, which was, you know, just really interesting. It's one of the most random things I've come across in, uh, in all the research I've done on all these different beer breweries and stuff like this. But apparently Lukas and uh, Georg just wanted to make whiskey. Originally they wanted to make whiskey and uh, they experimented a little bit with liqueurs and uh, they took a course at Beerlieb in Friedrichshain in Berlin and they learned how to cook wort for the whiskey and they were also trying their hand at brewing some beer at the same time. They did manage to produce some whiskey which they said was okay but not at the best that it could have been. Um, but they found that the beers that they were producing were considerably better than the whiskey, so they decided to stick with that, from what I understand. Um, but Lucas went on to do a number of internships at various breweries. He was at Puyula in Tallinn in Estonia, Beavertown in London in England, Boneyard over in Oregon in America, and he also took part in a few brews at Half Acre in Chicago with the Daisy Cutter, actually. They brewed the Half Acre Daisy Cutter, which is a really well-known New England IPA over there and he also did an internship at Caracalle Brewery in Jordan as well which apparently is one of the very few craft breweries that you're going to find there and he said it was very interesting to do that and see how these things go in a predominantly Muslim country um, but in early 2016 these guys produced their first beer on the larger scale at the old Kamba Brewery in Gunnarfingen 
uh, Gundelfingen, sorry, I should say, in Bavaria, and they've gradually been building up their output over the last few years and doing a number of collaboration beers. So this is where you're most likely to see First Viatric is as part of a collaboration. I've never seen, actually, any of their own beers, but like I say, I hope that we can feature those on the channel at some point later. Uh, but both of these guys have been working full-time at the company since March of 2019, and prior to that they were still working their normal, kind of regular jobs in, as well and doing this kind of on the side, um, but they've been looking to get their own physical brewery established they were hoping to get that done over 2020, but I think that has had to be uh, that has been delayed because of the whole COVID-19 situation. But as of September 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, according to Untapped, these guys have produced 95 different beers, and most of them tend to be IPAs, paleos, or sour beers at the moment. So um, yeah, as I say, a really well-respected member of the kind of new wave of German craft breweries. Uh, this is the very first time I'm trying something involving these guys, as I said, but hopefully we can get a few of their beers on the channel at some point in the future. But yeah, definitely, I always enjoy featuring the new German breweries on the channel. I enjoy German beer, you know, a lot. I mean, I my whole love of beer started with the Bamberg Rauch beers, and then when I lived in Germany, I discovered all the other traditional things. And uh, yeah, that was where it all really kind of kicked off for me to be honest with you. So um, yeah, definitely cool to have these guys on the channel and interesting to see another uh, gypsy brewery brewing at uh, Camba Bavaria as well. Camba Bavaria incidentally have some very, very nice beers, but you also have uh, Frau Gruber brewing their beers down there as well, actually. Uh, the factory, if, if I remember right, the old Camba factory is very close to Augsburg, if I'm I think so, yeah, I think it's pretty close to Augsburg in the very south of Germany. It's supposed to be a very nice city, actually. I've been all around Germany, but never to uh, to Augsburg, actually. So, fingers crossed, I can go down there and have a look at it at some point. That would be quite cool. But, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about First Viatchik for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, again, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different uh, beers and stuff that they've done. So um, yeah, really cool actually. So let's get on and have a taste of this beer then. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we uh, before we open it up. So as you can see, it's quite, you know, pretty much straightforward. I do like the kind of visible light spectrum thing that they've got going on there. I was a spectroscopist by trade when it came to the scientific side of things. It was astrophysics, uh, you know, molecular astrophysics, astrochemistry that I was involved in. So the visible light spectrum and just, you know, the spectrum, the, the wave spectrum generally, the electromagnetic spectrum is something that I've always been fascinated with. So I always like seeing little scientific things on the uh, the labels here. But yeah, the Wonderlust for the Wicked, uh, double IPA, total from Svenninge on Sea Island in Denmark and first Viatchik from Berlin in Germany. So um, yeah, 440 milliliters this one, 8.5% ABV, and as I said, released in Sweden as part of the Tilferig sortiment, the temporary sortiment in Sistembolaget on the 15th of September. So yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. This beer apparently is hopped with Citra, uh, Cryo Citra I think it was, uh, Galaxy from Australia, and also American Columbus. So yeah, this one should be pretty nice actually. I'm wondering with the Columbus in there if it is going to be a very kind of spicy New England double IPA actually. Columbus is a lovely hop in terms of adding bitterness. It was always very popular along with um, Chinook when it came to the West Coast IPAs actually. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one. Incidentally, this is only the second or third New England IPA that I've had from Tool actually. Most of the stuff before that um, it was always uh, most of the stuff. I think it was, yeah, because there was Whirl Domination, then there was the double IPA number one. So, yeah, this is the third um, New England style IPA that I've had from Toil these days. Because uh, for a long time they weren't, they weren't really doing them or they weren't really releasing them in different countries, from what I understand. So, yeah, it's cool that we finally got a few of these ones to try. But, yeah, as you can see with this beer, this is poured a lovely, I would say, a kind of peach juice colour, actually. It looks a sort of, I always compare the New England IPAs to different fruit juices, and this one to me looks very much like a sort of maybe mango-y, peach juice kind of thing. Very kind of light, actually. But you can see when this beer poured, it had a solid half finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head on this one. That is just fading away to be a very, very thin foamy layer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but usually, I guess, if there's bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, it might just be tiny specks of dust or something. But, um, yeah, it looks 
Um, it does look pretty nice actually and it's pretty much what you would expect from a New England IPA. If I shine the light through this one, I wouldn't say this is the haziest, uh, it's not the haziest of uh, New England IPAs, not the soupiest and gloopiest of New England IPAs I've found at 8.5% but it does certainly look the part in terms of the um, uh, you know, in terms of the, the style and things like that, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't have anything surprising about the appearance when you consider what style it is. But yeah, if I put my fingers behind the glass, there you can see the level of haze on this one. So um, yeah, pretty cool actually. So let's have a little look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we get on. I'm, cu I'm really curious about this. As I say, I've heard very good things about First Fiatchik. So let's go for it. Alright guys, sorry about the edit there, the dogs just got a little bit too loud to be honest, so just pause the recording. So yeah, let's take a look at the aroma of this one then and see how we get on. So yeah, the first thing you're going to notice about this beer, as I was saying, is the kind of wheatiness that it has. It's got a lovely big bitey wheaty quality to it, but at the same time, there is a nice bit of kind of smoothness to it as well. Uh, and the oats really come out in this one, I, mean, I think the oats in this one come out a little bit more um, in comparison with the other. New England IPAs I've had from Toll so far actually. But yeah, for me, on the malty side of things, it's the wheat that really kind of jumps out at you. So a lovely bit of big, uh, you know, a lovely bit of a kind of wheaty bitiness to this beer, like I was saying. Some smooth white bread in there. You do get some of the oaty creaminess coming out of the beer. There's a lovely little bit of that kind of Werther's Original um, kind of brown sugary note coming out of this as well. And, you know, to be honest, when you go above 8% uh, with these um, New England IPAs, that's what you really want. Um, you know, you need a little bit of brown sugar, I think, just to kind of smoothen the whole kind of beer out, because otherwise they can feel quite boozy, actually. And I've noticed this is a more kind of common thing amongst the uh, the New England IPAs these days. You get a little bit of that brown sugary element to them. So you can pick that up in this one. There's a little bit of a kind of um, biscuity, McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of quality that comes out of this beer as well. But yeah, the malt base for me, it comes across as very, very thick. Um, it's got a very smooth, kind of white, bready, wheaty thing in there as well, but also quite a, a bit of bitey wheat coming out of it, almost a little touch spicy. Um, some nice, kind of, uh, Werther's originally type brown sugary notes, good bit of creamy oats, and then, uh, yeah, I think that sums up, sums up the malt base of this one quite nicely, but definitely quite a wheaty, uh, leaning New England IPA, this one, in terms of the aroma. So, um, yeah, this one should be really nice. Um, yeah, I always like a good malt base in my beers, as you'll know if you've watched the channel before. But yeah, for this one then, um, on the hoppy side of things, you do get a little touch of earthiness out of this one, but this one comes across as really quite bright and floral. All of the hops in this beer, of course, are quite high alpha acid. You know, Citra is normally about 14% alpha acid. I think Galaxy is even stronger than that, if I remember rightly. Maybe about 15 or 16. Galaxy has a hell of a pungency to it. But the main one we should be looking at for the floral side of things would be the Columbus. I'm guessing the Columbus would have been added as an early addition hop to give the beer the bitterness and things, but it's really quite, um, quite spicy and things. Um... You do get a good level of spice out of this beer, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, this beer, it's, it, I think this one might be a little bit more bitter than some of the other Toro ones that, come, that I've come across because it does have a good bit more of a kind of big floral sort of spicy note to it, which is really interesting. You get a nice little bit of a lighter grassiness out of this beer as well, and the fruits are kind of what you would expect in this one if you know these hops. So for me, at the front of the nose there's definitely um, a good bit of that pungent passion fruit equality that'll be mainly from the um, that'll be mainly from the galaxy that you'll get that and then you start to get some of the softer tropical fruits as well which will come from a blend of the the galaxy and of the uh, the citron there as well so there's definitely some mangoes in this one so you get the slightly stronger passion fruits a little bit further back you get the slightly stronger mangoes in there as well um, but you also get you also get a few lighter things, you know, like a bit of pineapple and a bit of um. You also get a little bit of pineapple, and you also get a little bit of um, how do you say? A little bit of pineapple, a little bit of papaya and things like that as well. And there's maybe a few little of the kind of gooseberry lychee kind of notes you can get from uh, citra in there as well actually so that's quite interesting maybe a little touch of a zesty note on the front of the nose as well so yeah some lovely fruity characters to this beer slightly stronger tropical fruits like i was saying but also the really softer ones and to be honest i would say that the beer leans a little bit more towards those kind of tropical slightly softer tropical notes actually but um yeah let's have a little look 
at the flavour of this one then and see how we go. I'm very curious about this. So yeah, this beer is called The Wanderlust for the Wicked, an 8.5% New England Dumble IPA from Toil, based in Sveninge on Sealand in Denmark, brewed in, collabor with, 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 brewed in collaboration with First Viacic from uh, Berlin in Germany. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, Prost. Oh yeah, that's really nice actually. Um, yeah, that's a lovely beer that. Thumbs up to both breweries involved here. You know, when I tried the first IPA that I had from uh, Toil in the new brewery, um, was that I think that was the Whirl Domination if I remember rightly. Um, either that or it was the double IPA number one and it was a nice enough beer but it just it wasn't it, it was nowhere near as kind of refined and as, as kind of well done as this one actually so it's kind of interesting that Toyo they maybe they really seem to have got their groove on a little bit with these actually so yeah I find this beer a lot this one just comes across as a lot more refined and a lot you know, nicer to drink actually than the original ones were and I say that but there wasn't you know there, I'm not saying it as if it was something wrong with the original beers that they had, but it just comes over that, that it just feels so much stronger. Actually, this beer, it just really feels as if it's got, as if they've really just kind of settled into. They've got into the rhythm and they can pump these things out now. So yeah, de I would say that yeah, this is definitely there's definitely a kind of improvement going on with these beers from Toyo. But that always happens usually when a brewery moves. Sometimes you get a few little teething things and then they kind of start to take off again. So I'm glad to see that in Toyo's case that is certainly being the that is certainly what's happening here. But this is a lovely um New England double actually. If you get the chance to try this I think you will like this for sure. So yeah, where to start with this one actually? It's actually, I would say that in with the um, flavours and stuff like that, this one actually comes across a lot differently in the malt base. The hoppy flavours and fruits and things like that are what you'd expect, but the malt base is quite different from what I was expecting. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at that then. So, um, straight away with this beer, you'll get that lovely kind of white bready, um, that white bready malty quality that just blankets the middle of your tongue. If you go towards the back third of your palate, you do get a little bit of bitiness from the wheat, but it actually really evolves on that back third of your palate. It really evolves to become a lot kind of. Um, I would say it really evolves to become a lot kind of smoother and things like that. But at the very back, you do get a few kind of spicy, bittery notes out of the beer. But yeah, lovely kind of smooth. Um, quality in there, but as you move further forward into the middle of your palate, it actually becomes a little bit more kind of sweetened things. You can feel the sort of pale malty base, if you like, is a little bit more. Pardon me, it's giving me a bit of gas. Um, it is a little bit more kind of crisp, to be honest with you. And if you go towards the front half of that, you've got a lovely, smooth and kind of creamy oaty character that comes out of it. And if you move towards the back half of that, um, if you move towards the kind of back half of that middle. Um, third of your tongue, you get some of these lovely kind of where there's originally brown sugary notes that I was talking about. There is a wee bit of a biscuity quality as you move towards the edge there, but those brown sugars they almost come out in a like a kind of circular shape. And if you when you're in the very centre, that's when you get those really kind of concentrated um, where there's originally brown sugary notes. But as you move out towards the edge of it, um, you get um, you get a little bit more of a kind of um, biscuity. Um, you get a little bit more of a McVitie's digestive biscuit sort of thing comes out of it. So yeah, it's pretty cool in that sense. I really like the way the malt base comes across in this one. This, the smoothness and the slight sweetness that it has really kind of hits the spot for me actually. You, you guys might like a more kind of spicy malt base than this. And I really thought that this beer was going to be more wheaty and spicy. But it's actually very, very smooth and really kind of creamy actually. So yeah, I like how this one um, goes together. So yeah, thumbs up to Toil and First Viacic for the... Um, for the, the way that this malt base goes together. Really like it. So yeah, let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer now. So yeah, uh, back corners of the palate, there's a tiny little bit of earthiness to this one. 
but not overly much. Um, as you move further forward along the sides of the pouch, you can get some of that Columbus spiciness coming out of the, the beer, but I will say, um, this beer, you will notice that the sides of your palate really dry out quite a bit. The further that you go into that, um, the further that you go into that aftertaste. But yeah, as you move round the front, as you move round the kind of front curve of the palate, it does get a little bit of a lighter, more grassy quality to it. The hops in this one, the bitterness in this beer, is actually pretty low. I think I thought this was going to be higher in terms of bitterness because the Columbus really came out in the aroma. So um, yeah, the hoppy flavours, if you like, are what I was expecting. But um, I think it comes across as a little bit more bitter when you first take it in. So it's this is one that your mouth kind of has to adjust to a little bit, I would say. But yeah, the, the, you do get a little bit of that kind of Columbus sort of spicy character on the front sides of your tongue. And round the front curve of the palate, as I said, it's a little bit lighter and more grassy. The front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. If you go towards the back of that, you'll get the kind of stronger passion fruity notes. You'll get some of the kind of juicier mangoes in front of that. And then beyond that, as you push towards the front edge of the tongue, you've got a few, you've got a kind of apricoty papaya type thing. Um, I want to say there's a wee touch of pineapple to this one as well. I think you do get a little bit of a slightly more oily pineapple on the kind of front part of your palate as well. But on the very tip of the tongue, there are one or two little gooseberry type aromas. I don't get so much of the lychee. I was picking up lychee in the aroma, but no, I think it's more good. There's just a little touch of gooseberry there. And on the very kind of front edge of the palate, you can feel there is a wee bit of a kind of lemony, zesty sort of thing mixing in with the grassy uh, kind of components of the beer as well. So yeah, this one to me, overall, it actually comes across as a very smooth and juicy New England IPA, this one. Um, it's not the, the most bitter of New England double IPAs that I've come across. It's actually just really, really smooth and very nice to uh, to drink this one actually. So I, l I really like how this how this one actually goes together. I thought this was going to be quite a big bitter one and then quite wheaty and bitey. Uh, I really thought this was going to be a little bit more like a kind of trillium type New England IPA, but it's actually turned out to be more of a kind of smooth, creamy treehouse rather than a more bitey, wheaty trillium type New England. So um, yeah, it's interesting that. It's interesting how sometimes, sometimes beers will taste exactly as they smell, as they are exactly as you would expect from the aroma, but sometimes the, the flavour profile comes out a little bit differently. So um, yeah, interesting, really interesting. It's this level of spice from the wheat, I think, that really got me on this one. And I did expect it to be a bit more bitter than it is, but it's a lovely beer. It is a lovely, lovely New England double IPA, this one. So yeah, let's do, focus on the mouthfeel then and round off. Um, so yeah, mouthfeel-wise for me, I'd say that this is kind of top end of mid-bodied, maybe bottom end of full-bodied. The carbonation is really um, it's really smooth on this one. For me, it's got a nice, um, there's a bit of slickness almost to the mouthfeel on this. It's got a lovely kind of creamy backbone to it, but a bit of wetness and a bit of slickness at the same time. In terms of the hoppy bitterness, I think this one is your kind of standard 30 IBUs. It could be 35 or 40 at a push, but I think it's your standard 30, to be quite honest with you. Um, in terms of the, the fruity side of things, it's got a lovely juicy smoothness to the fruit. Like I said, a mix of the stronger tropical fruit notes, but then some of the lighter, kind of juicier ones as well, actually. I really like how um, how this, how this the flavour of this one um, goes together, actually. Um, yeah, lovely juicy fruity characters to it. The malt base in this one, as I say, lovely and smooth, but it's got a lovely little bit of sweetness as well, actually. For me, this is one of these beers where everything just kind of fits together. Um, it doesn't, you know, in terms of the New England IPA, this one doesn't really do anything surprising, if you like. It's just another very, very good example of the style. And I mean, to be honest, when there's as many New England IPAs on the market as there is these days, you can't really ask for anything more than that. It's another solid effort from Toil, and it definitely gives me a good idea of what First Viacic are going to be like as well, actually. So as I say, I hope that I can do a few dedicated reviews to them at some point, but I've never seen their beer yet. I have heard of them and I've seen collaborations, but I've never seen any of their own stuff. So fingers crossed uh, that makes it up to Copenhagen at some point soon and I can get some for you. I've certainly not seen it here 
in uh, in Sweden actually. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one's a lovely, lovely, very smooth and easy drinking New England double IP. It's a bit dangerously drinking actually, a bit dangerously drinkable for uh, for an eight point five percenter. So just be aware of that. But yeah, very very nice beer, and I've certainly enjoyed reviewing this one for you. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one then. So this one was the Wanderlust for the Wicked, a double IPA, eight point five percent AVB brewed. Uh, in Sveninge at Toyo's Toyo City Brewery, uh, brewed in collaboration with First Viatchik, a gypsy brewery based in Berlin, but brewing their beers down in Bavaria at Camba Bavaria near Augsburg. So, um, yeah, awesome beer this. I do recommend that you check out this one and I look forward to trying more beers from Toyo and fingers crossed a few more from First Viatchik in the future. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Toyol and from First Viatchik. We will do more Danish and German reviews for you at some point soon. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanjut School, make sure you check out Toyol, make sure you check out First Viatchik, and you will hopefully see more from these breweries very, very soon. So cheers.